Welcome back to After the Whistle. Right now I'm joined by North Dakota High School Activities Association Executive Director Matt Fetch. Matt, excited to have you with us and uh, exciting time of year. We're almost to the, the fall sports season. It's been a, a long summer, but uh, we finally made it. It is, yeah. It's always exciting. The, we, we, I don't know if we joke, but the reality is the coaches convention, which is always the, the last week of July, kind of marks the end of summer. And uh, fall sports start up right after that and something we're always looking forward to. And is there anything different with this year's fall sports schedule that you're exciting about or, or looking forward to? No, probably the, the biggest change, which happened last year, this will be year two, where our Class B girls golf was moved from the spring to the fall, was a pretty overwhelmingly positive move made. And uh, so all of our girls golf and both classifications in the fall and the, the boys are all in the spring. So be a near two of that. And uh, other than that, calendar wise, not a lot of major change. Yeah. And so taking back to that decision to change the, the schedule for the, the uh, girls golf, uh, why was that? And uh, how, how has it brought about a positive impact? Something that had been talked about, this is my going into year 13 in the office. And I know as long as I've been around, it's something the coaches have talked about. Something they're maybe torn 50-50 on over the years and just nothing ever escalated to the board level. Several years ago, we had a push from a handful of school administrators working through the, the ADs mainly and some superintendents. And when the survey was done, it was about 70% that supported the move. So it was done. And uh, what we found, a couple of factors, I think number one, our fastest growing activity for girls by far has been class B softball, which is in the spring. So the move allowed some of those individuals not to have to dual sport the same year. So uh, you'll find, you know, there's some areas of the state where class B softball hasn't really blown up yet, if you will. So they're, uh, you know, probably puzzled why you would, would move golf anywhere but the spring. But a majority of the state, it's it's been rapidly growing and continues. So yeah, we had, uh, I know one region up in the Minot area that the last year in the spring, they had five full girls golf teams in the entire region. And then last year in the fall, they had 11 full teams. So it just uh, allowed some of those girls that may or may not have been doing anything in the fall to participate in golf. And, and again, even if they are in volleyball cross country or another fall activity, they a lot of times have that dual sport option. So, uh, so far so good. Yeah. And staying with golf a little bit, the, there's been some talk I've heard recently, some ideas floated out there about potentially moving boys golf to the summer. Is that an idea you've heard or is, what would you, what are your thoughts on potentially anything like that? No, I haven't. I haven't heard one word about that from from anyone involved with a member school. So there's there's always ideas floated out there, maybe on social media. But I think at the the school level, there's uh, I'm not aware of any serious discussion. Do you like where the the boys golf calendar is right now? Um, it's it's fine. I mean, I think with our state and the weather, you probably could easily win any argument that fall is a better season than spring as far as golf goes in North Dakota. And we're just uh, kind of a unique, every state's unique, but we have four sports where our boys and girls seasons are split, uh, tennis, swimming and diving, along with soccer and the, and the golf seasons. And uh, what federal courts have ruled and what we've kind of tried to follow is that the advantageous seasons, half of them, the boys have the advantageous season and half from the girls have that advantageous season. And we feel we're meeting the law by doing that. So the, the seasons are it's something where you move one, you're going to have to move another and it in, ends up impacting a, a very large number of individuals. So it's it kind of is what it is for lack of a better term. Also, couldn't talk fall sports, of course, without football. Uh, last year, the, the redistricting of some of the, the schools, uh, how, how has that gone and uh, what, what have you seen from, from that and the impact of that? Yeah, last year was the first time in about a generation where the football classifications had, a, I'll say, more of a major overhaul than an annual or two-year tweaking. And now every year there's some going to be adjustments. The when, when my board approved it, it was something they knew it was going to take about four years for it to kind of play out teams to fall where they were maybe fit a little bit more naturally and so on. So the biggest change, I guess, is that there's annual change with it, especially right away versus every other year. But overall, I think the 
athletic administrators across the state have done a real good job uh, getting to the point where schedules are a lot more um, maybe fan friendly, if you will, done a lot, lot better job of trying to get more competitive matchups as best they can throughout the years. So as always, it's, uh, you know, can look good on paper. And then once the season plays out, you decide if it was a good decision or not. But I, I think it's something they're constantly looking to improve and, and everyone just learning as they go. So that's probably the biggest piece with the new classifications. All right, Matt, we'll appreciate your time and excited for the, the fall sports uh, here in North Dakota to finally get rolling.